Na ho he ho, 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 na ho he ho. So we finally got the Maniac slash Royal equivalent for SMT5 called Shin Megami Tensei 5 Vengeance, also known as SMTVV or SMTW or whatever the hell you want to call it. It's got a new story, it's got a new girl, it's got new demons, it's got grind rails, it has new day one DLC, f*** you, and Naho he ho, Naho he ho, Naho he ho. So... As you guys already know by now, yeah, uh, this exists. Vengeance is a thing. It got announced at the Nintendo Direct Partner Showcase that happened this morning. I was two hours away, so I could not record anything until now. I am now back, so I can actually do something. But I want to talk about it because I got some thoughts. Overall, general mood, I'm excited. I think this looks really cool. I'm really happy that it's multi-platform. I am really happy with how they are handling the new campaign, the Canon of Vengeance, as they are calling it. And yeah, no, I, I am optimistic. I still have some concerns, of course, you know, you know it's not, not, not everything looks perfect, but I am pretty satisfied. So let's go through everything that has come out from this, both from the initial announcement trailer that was in the direct as well as the live stream that atlas japan did right afterwards which by the way smt 55 pushed horizon out of the way of the elden ring shaped bus that is just veering straight for them because not only is the elden ring dlc being released the exact same day as vengeance but even the live stream going into detail about Vengeance happened at the same time as the live stream for the Elden Ring DLC. I'll be honest. I mean, I, I, hey, I was, I was wrong. I was wrong when it came to P3R and uh, Like a Dragon 8. That was my very last video. Just being super wrong. But it's the sort of thing where it's like, man... Man, this sucks for SMT5, man. This sucks. Anyway, that, that, that's, 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 that, that is that thought. Story. It is taking the Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker route by letting you pick between the original story, which is now known as the Canon of Creation, and the new story, Canon of Vengeance. If you ask me... This is how every single new piece of, like, story or new campaign or whatever, this is how all of these should be done in these Atlas Enhanced re-releases. We shouldn't have to play through the entire game again in order to get there. In order to get to the new content. Even if SMT5 is nowhere near as long as Persona 5, I, it, it, I still shouldn't have to play 40 hours to get to the new content. So I am really glad that they're just letting you start right there with the new stuff. Of course, it is not 100% new. The Canon of Vengeance actually starts off the same as before. But once you get out of the beginning, it veers off in a new direction. My guess is that it will veer off once you finish the first area, Minato. Right after that is when you would have gone into Sahori's story. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is the point that things start to diverge. You see, there is a shot in the trailer, or in the live stream, I don't remember which was which, but there is a shot in which you can see the new girl of the game, the enhanced re-release waifu, the re-release girl, as people have coined the term, Yoko Hiromine. There's a shot in which you can see her right next to the train car where you would initially have met Atita in the original release of SMT5. Now, if you played SMT5, you know that is like 30 minutes into the game? Like, that's not far at all. So it seems as though you will be meeting her there, and then probably the rest of Minato will be the same. But then once you get done with that, that's when things will start to, like, really change. Once you get back to Tokyo proper, that's when things will be different. I wouldn't be surprised if Sahori isn't even in this version of events because i as far as i could tell i didn't see her in the trailer i didn't see her in the stream she could just be gone she might be gone from this new story which 
Uh, fair. If you were going to remove something, that's the one you would remove. It is the most unimportant for the plot. But, I like. I mean, I, I liked I liked Sahori's story. The execution was rough, but I, I liked it. But, hey, at least it is being preserved in the canon of creation. Regardless, back to my initial point, it will probably start to veer off there. Which, there are four maps of dot in smt5 that is only about a quarter of the way through the game that is much 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 more reasonable than having to replay the entire game like you would have to with persona 5 royal or some other thing i also am just really glad that it is a brand new campaign and not some new story that's being bolted on to the original story i think one thing that everyone can agree on is the story of smt5 is rough i really love its ideas and its lore. I loved all of that stuff. But when it came to the execution, yeah, it's rough. It's not great. It seems like there was a lot cut out in development. And honestly, it based on something I'll talk about in a minute, it seems like 100% even the developers are aware that, yes, that, that, that is 100% what happened and they are trying to fix that with this version. So the main thing we know about the story is two things. The Goddesses of Vengeance, Kaditsu, or Kadistu. I don't know how you would say it. I haven't heard it in English yet. Frankly, this is the first time I'm really looking at it and trying to figure out how to say it. Kadistu? Kadistu. They are a mysterious group of demons led by Lilith, who is voiced by Caitlin Galt, who, most relevantly to Atlas fans, just played Miss Toraumi in Persona 3 Reload. Beyond that, as far as I could tell, she hasn't really done anything else for Atlas. But, hey, it's always cool to see some quote-unquote new blood. You know what I mean. Another thing about Lilith is brand new design. It is not the Kaneko design. This is something new, brand new, by Masayuki Doi. In fact, all of the goddesses of the Karistu are brand new designs, and I love them. I have not even really sat down to try and figure out who is who. But I don't care. These designs are great. I, I, I love them. I really, really, really love them. I am so happy with this. Masayuki Doi, I think for SMT5, just really excels. And like, I, there's not a single design in this game that I find questionable or iffy or anything. It seems like the Kadistu, they are going to be the antagonist that will cause the story to change. So we'll see where that goes. We see a shot of them attacking the subway over in Shinagawa back in the real Tokyo. So that is probably where things will, will go down. Rather than Lamu escaping into the real world and causing havoc, thus forcing you to go back into Dot, it seems like it will be these four breaking into the real world, causing havoc, and then it will veer off in a completely different direction. As for the previously mentioned Yoko Hiramine, you meet her at the train car, like I said. She actually joins your party as a human party member. Technically meaning playable comps. At least assuming she uses a comp. Actually, no. 100% yes, playable comps, because there's another shot during all of this footage that we now have where you can see Atsuta is part of your party as well, and he 100% uses a comp. Now... Yoko here is voiced by Aaron v uh, Yvette, not good with names. She previously voiced Mia in SMT5 and now SMT55. Is this a spoiler? Is this a spoiler? It's, is this just like, Yo Yoko, Yoko is Sophia, right? Is that what this means? Is that what this means? Because if so, uh, Spoiler alert. <laughs> Regardless, I like Yoko's design. I think she's really cute, but I also just think, like, she looks good. She looks good. I just really like this design. Like, beyond the cuteness aspect, it, 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 I just really like this. I am curious to see where this goes. Even if I do kind of groan at the re-release waifu, I don't know. First impressions with her are pretty good. Now, when it comes to the gameplay, we have... Quite a few details. First off, they're brand new demons. Both new new demons and new old demons. They are adding over 40 demons to this game. Some of which I will be getting into when I talk about the day one DLC. But from what we're seeing, the new demons look really, really cool. We have a new area of Dot. So if you might remember, every area in Dot has kind of a distinctive color. 
When it comes to Minato, that area was very yellow. When it comes to Shinagawa, it was very red. When it came to the third area, it was very gray. When it came to Taito, it was very blue. This area is very lavender. I don't really have much more to say, but I think it is very pretty. It is really cool that there's going to be a fifth map. What I love so much about the exploration in SMT5 was just running around and the feel of movement of exploring and just seeing what's over here what's over there oh there's like some cool demons over here there's like a side quest there's something going on i don't know it felt very xenoblade to me and i was very satisfied with the exploration in that game another thing on top of a new area of dot is we are apparently getting a new dungeon hopefully it's better than the two dungeons that were in base smt5 i like the 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 blending of dungeon design with the overworld that they went for, the field gin, I guess you could say. But the actual dedicated dungeons, of which there was only two in SMT5, they were, uh, uh, let's just say, left a lot to be desired. Hopefully, whatever this new dungeon is, is a lot better. It actually feels properly designed. It's not just a bunch of straight lines and, like, piss-easy puzzles. I don't know. Those are easily the weakest area of the game. But... I, I, I like the field gen thing. I'm more excited for the new area of Dot than I am the new dungeon, but we'll, we'll see how this goes. Obviously, combat, still the good old press turn system. All allied demons now have a unique skill, which, based on what they showed, seemingly these unique skills are all passive, but, you know, that's just a theory until we can see more. The reason why I think they are passive is because the ones they showed off, the three of them they showed off, they were all passive, so... Yeah, it's probably passive. I did not get those translated. I don't know what they say. Hopefully, these things actually end up being worth a damn because it's a neat idea, but, you know, I don't know what they do yet, so hopefully. Now, the big thing for me in terms of the gameplay is, is that fucking fusion spells? Fusion spells in a game that is not a remake of a game that already had them? Like, brand new, like, just straight up. We see Jack Frost doing a really cool team up move is this fusion spells please tell me this is fusion spells i love fusion spells so 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 much please a few other details we have a new level cap of 150 you can speed up skill cut scenes and by that i mean you don't just have to press the a button to skip them outright you can speed them up to two times speed three times speed it, it set it up so that it skips them automatically whatever you can turn miracles on or off there are items that let you reallocate your skills. I know some people might have some issues with that. I think it's just a quality of life thing. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Uh, save anywhere. To me, this feels unnecessary. Not because I think, no, you shouldn't be able to do that or anything like that. It's more so I felt like the ley line founts were plentiful enough and they were placed in the right areas. At no point did I ever feel like oh man, I wish I could save at this point, or I could do this, or I could do that, or like, like, there's not enough of them. I always felt like there was the right, like the perfect amount. So to me, save anywhere just feels a little unnecessary. I mean, it's cool if you want to do that, but I just, I don't, I don't think it's needed, I guess. One thing I will say is needed that I think is just straight up a quality of life. You can use batches of growth items all at once, as opposed to using them one at a time. That is just straight up quality of life. It saves you time, saves you, you know, all this is just good. It, this is just good. You, it's not that I misunderstood it at first. I thought it meant that you could reuse a growth item more than one times, but no, it is straight up. You just use a bunch of them at once. So earlier I mentioned that SMT5 the first time through took me 40 hours. Well, during the live stream, they said that the base game was 80 hours and that Vengeance now makes it 160, essentially doubling the playtime. Now, um, I beat it for the first time in 40 hours. 80 hours is not true. I do not believe that. But doubling 40 hours is still insane. So this new campaign is going to be meaty. It is so much more than just a new story being bolted on. This is why I think the comparison, it's actually more apt to compare it with Devil Survivor 2 Record Breaker as opposed to a Persona 5 Royal because this is not a new story being bolted on. It seems like this is just straight up a redo, a brand new campaign. 
We also have some details about release info. Of course, as I mentioned previously, it's coming out the exact same day as Elden Ring, which sucks, but I mean, it sucks for Atlas, but I will say I am shocked that it's releasing so damn soon. It's releasing right in the middle of the year. I think this is perfectly paced actually for it to go alongside Persona 3 Reload and Metaphor Refantasio. I think this is just paced super well. I'm curious to see how well this game does, especially with Elden Ring coming. But yeah, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see. As I mentioned previously, there's also day one DLC. Fucking ew. But I, I do think it's cool that Dogda is back. The fact that SMT5 lacked Apocalypse Demons just felt like a glaring omission. I don't know why Dogda wasn't there. And frankly, I mean, as far as I can tell, I might be wrong here, but as far as I can tell, it's only Dogda. Where is Krishna? Where is... Uh, I can't remember any of the other ones. But y you get what I mean. You get what I mean. Like, like hopefully a lot of the Apocalypse Demons, even if I'm not the biggest fan of some of those designs, hopefully they get included. I'm just glad they're here. Dogda is a cool design. It might not be the best design for Dogda, but it's a cool one. There's another day one DLC with Konohana Sakuya. Don't know what the hell that is in Shintoism, but it's more day one DLC. Even if I like her design, still disappointed. There's a bunch of grinding DLC with Mitamas, you know, for Maka, for experience points, for, for, for this, for that, for just whatever. I don't like it, but this is just so standard at this point for SMT that seeing this just does nothing for me at least the day one dlc from the original release is included so that's something fucking atlas man if you get the game on switch it lets you do a save transfer if you have the original smt5 now conceptually this sounds like oh maybe i should get the switch version and then you look at what you actually get for the save transfer, and then I'm like, nah, fuck that. Uh, no, that's not a good reason at all to get it on Switch. I'm getting this on PS5. All you get for it is a few bonus items, depending on what endings you cleared, which if I remember correctly, that is what Apocalypse did if you had an SMT4 save file. And secondly, the other thing you get, and this is the pathetic part, you can carry over three demons from your compendium into the new compendium. Three. That is fucking pathetic. Why, why even do it at that point? No, fuck that. Fuck you. Why? <laughs> why? I'm getting this on PS5. Screw the Switch version. I love the Switch, but like, man, <laughs> no, no, I'm not doing that. To end things off, we got a director interview or rather a Q&A with the game's director, Shigeo Komori. The main thing I want to note is that Komori mentions that lots of ideas had to be dropped from the base game during development, which only confirms, you know, development hell that game went through, which I've been saying for a long time. But what's so encouraging is that apparently these dropped ideas became the driving force behind SMTVV. That has me interested because I want to see what these dropped ideas were, because we kind of got a little glimpse of them in development interviews with Yamai in the past, where they talked about, we want to tackle this issue or that issue or explore this theme or whatever. And like, none of that was in there. The only real like issue we explored was bullying. So I am curious to see what was it that got cut. We can kind of get an idea based on the trailer where like there's a scene where you are sitting down and talking with Algami in Dot, it looks cool, it looks interesting. Maybe it could actually flesh out these characters. I think when it comes to the story, again, the ideas and the concepts and the lore is all really good and really interesting. I love it a lot. The problem was the execution. I've been saying I would have preferred an apocalypse style thing, either with brand new lore or with a side story or something, because I don't think you could just bolt on a new story to the old one and make it good. However, what this is doing is a basically a redo. They're just redoing it. It's the same beginning, but then it veers off early on. So maybe this new story could actually salvage a lot of the problems 
of SMT5. It could go in and salvage these ideas. The things about, you know, knowledge and, and the unknown, like, are you making the right choice? Maybe it could make Atsuta a real character. Maybe Dazai can actually continue to be the best character, but actually feel well-written alongside that and not just simply be all like, oh, I'm I'm so weak and now I'm having my Joker moment. You know, like, like maybe they could actually do something there, you know? And make it good. I don't know, we'll see. I'm excited for this. I think it looks cool. I still got some concerns. I still got some issues with uh, day one DLC, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. What are you guys thinking? Let me know down in the comments below. I got some more stuff coming. I still have that Like a Dragon 8 video coming. I That is that is shaping up to be way bigger than I initially planned it to be. But yeah, uh, go down. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe. Hit the bell to be notified of when my next video is out. Check out my Patreon. You guys have a nice day. I, I don't know. I, this, looks, this looks cool. This looks cool. I am excited.